be intentional about what you want to achieve. And that's going to be our first question when we're meeting with our partners. Hey, what's important to you? What are you trying to do? There's a ton of things that Quest does, right? But it's irrelevant if it's not helping move the needle for our partners. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Incident Report presented by Quest Technology Management. I'm Paul Burke, Director of Technology Communications. Every week, I'm joined by VP of Sales and Partnerships, Adam Burke. The Incident Report brings you conversations with thought leaders, business innovators, and channel mavericks to help you stay productive and agile in a changing technology landscape. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Incident Report podcast. Usually, I am here just with Adam Burke, but today it's a special event. I'm here with Gary Schick and Darcy Baker. Super excited to have both of you. If you don't know, Darcy Baker is the VP of Marketing. Gary Schick is the Quest National Partner Manager. And of course, Adam Burke, VP of Partnerships. Adam, how are you doing? I am ecstatic, ecstatic about being here with the team and talking about Channel Partners. All three of you are going to Channel Partners Conference and Expo April 11th through the 14th down at the Venetian in Las Vegas. Channel Partners is a, is a fantastic industry event. It's growing rapidly. Quest has been attending for probably the last 13 years. There's always a, a big spring show. And it's really a good opportunity for the supplier community to meet with those agents and trusted advisors and people out there to connect up and share the latest and greatest, you know, war stories from the front lines out there in the technology consulting world. Get to know what's going on. Everyone gets a good opportunity to meet up and see what's changing in the channel. There's been a lot of, a lot of changes recently. So really looking forward to this year's event. Gary, how about yourself? What are you looking forward to? Thank you, Paul. Yeah, Channel Partners, as Adam mentioned, is, is a great event for the industry to get together with the sellers who are in the field, your traditional agents, your sub-agents, your partner subs, and what have you, who are out with their actual customers on the street, asking about their requirements and their issues and their pains and their needs, and really to connect with the hundreds of suppliers that they have available in their portfolio through their master distributors, through direct relationships and what have you for the people who can actually help execute and get that work done. So I'm excited to, you know, be part of that as part of a supplier network, where we get to learn what's important to our uh, relationships with our partners and our partner stuff, see what they're interested in, where their needs are, and where we can help fill their needs and address their business, grow out their business. And Darcy, what are you looking forward to at Channel Partner Conference? I'm really looking forward to it. I've had many conversations with our clients and some of our tech distributors. So for me, a couple things. I'm super excited to meet our clients in person. I think it's really important. We do like a million WebEx calls and phone calls, but it's really nice to meet people in person, uh, especially after the past couple of years with COVID and people not getting out. So I think that's going to be really nice. We're really excited about the marketing support services initiative that we have for our partners. So that's the other thing I'm really excited about going to be meeting with several of our agents to talk about the different marketing support services that we are rolling out for our agents. And it's really big stuff. I mean, we're looking at helping with automated campaigns and landing pages and marketing plans. And there's just so many things that we're rolling out for our agents. So it's a great opportunity to meet in person and sit down and talk about with our agents. Hey, what are you doing? Where do you need help? Because we do, we have a lot of agents um, that reach out and say, Hey, can you help us with our marketing efforts? And the answer is yes. So uh, that's why I'm really excited about going A, to, to meet our clients and um, suppliers and, and just sit down with our agents and see how we can help them with their marketing efforts. Thank you for mentioning that, Darcy. So people have the opportunity to sit down and meet with us at Channel Partners Conference, and we're really look, looking forward to that. Adam, who would you like to meet? So looking forward to meeting, you know, our existing partners, you know, we've been in the channel for 15 plus years, definitely have a well-established partner network. So always looking to meet with familiar faces and, and catch up with old friends, new folks, people who are new to the industry, new to the channel, just hung up their shingle, you know, last year to, to start their own brokerage or are trying to understand more about the channel. I remember my first time at channel partners, I walked in completely overwhelmed, didn't quite know, wow, there's these types of suppliers, there's these types of distributors. There's a lot that people are going to get hit with when they walk in there. So we're looking to help meet with organizations and understand what they're looking to achieve. So really anyone, you know, same as our go-to-market with our customers and, and with our partners, clients is 
how how can we help? And that's the same approach we want to have with folks who are in the channel. What are you looking to do with your business? Where can we help? Where can we align? Where can we work together? So anyone that's looking for help, whether they're looking to grow their cybersecurity practice, their applications, their disaster recovery, any type of professional services or physical infrastructure, we're looking to engage and understand if we can, you know, augment what they're doing. That sounds great. And Gary, how about yourself? Who are you looking forward to sitting down with? Yeah, that's a great question. For me, for me personally, I have responsibility for covering some of our larger master technology distributors, some of our larger of our partners. And I think in their day-to-day, -day, in my daily life, I often spend a lot of time getting in the weeds on specific transactions. Hey, somebody needs something today and here's the conversation that they're in. Uh, and there's so many you know, other things that that person that contact us, their customers are doing uh, that maybe aren't topical at that specific moment, but really taking the time off of the transaction to really get to know our partner base and what's important to them, what their priorities are, and kind of sharing some things where we've been helping other customers that maybe are some gaps that they have right there and, and really understanding how we can work together. That's really hard to do on the phone calls and via WebEx in our day-to-day. -day. So for me, just that one-on-one -on -one contact, getting to meet the people, getting to learn more about them and really expand both of our understanding of one another's business is a big deal. Thanks. And Darcy, what are you looking forward to? Usually when I land on an expo floor, I, I want to network with as many people as possible and meet as many people. But my focus for this particular show will be sitting down with our current clientele and working with agents directly on, hey, how can we help you with your marketing efforts? What can we do to support your um, marketing efforts to grow your business and just talk about a couple different plans that we can put together, a couple different ways in which we can provide those marketing services. That's really going to be a big focus for me, but I, of course, I'm going to be looking at meeting everyone, as many people as I possibly can. <laughs> if you're a person, if you're a human being, <laughs> sign up and sit down and have a conversation. I just am a people person. I can't help it. <laughs> Love it. Adam, you mentioned the first time attending the event, it was a little overwhelming. What suggestions, what advice would you give somebody attending for the first time? Great question, Paul. So there's a lots of suppliers at the event and there are a lot of ideas about what people should be doing as you're walking through the show floor. There's going to be people telling you to invest in your cybersecurity practice, to invest in your, your telecommunications expertise, to invest in your application and, and also that everyone's going to be telling you what to do. I would strongly advise anyone who's going there to be very intentional about what matters to your organization. What are you looking to get out of the show? If you're looking to grow your security practice, go to a few breakout sessions. There's some great fastball sessions, some great speakers who are focused on those. I'd check out there's like security track, there's infrastructure track, there's application track. Really be intentional about your time and where you want to go and what you want to do with your organization because there's a ton to explore and a ton to see. It's four days, but really the meat of it is, is Tuesday and Wednesday when you're, you know, you're going to get the most out of it on the Tuesday and Wednesday that week. Be intentional about what you want to achieve. And that's, that's going to be our first question when we're meeting with our partners. Hey, what's important to you? What are you trying to do? There's a ton of things that Quest does, right? But it's irrelevant if it's not, not helping move the needle for our partners. If I can add to that, I think that's brilliant advice. And the key is planning ahead of time. And to speak to what Adam just said, like be focused and be intentional and plan. If you can even plan your meetings before the show, in fact, that's why we've set links out to our calendars to everyone. Like, hey, let's book appointments ahead of time. If you can map out, you know, know what your intention is, set some goals. What type of suppliers do I want to meet with? What specific companies do I want to meet with? What specific goals do I have with each that I want to tackle? Map that out before the show. Set your appointments as many as you can with those particular people and organizations before the show. Get those appointments on the books. The more that you can be focused and planned ahead of time, like Adam said, there's a lot of noise, especially in Vegas. So as soon as you hit that show floor, there's, there's everyone tugging at your ears. Hey, you need to do this. Hey, you need to do that. But if you stay focused and you have that plan ahead of time and you have your appointment set ahead of time, you will be far more successful. Those are such fantastic insights.
Gary, how about you? When you approach a channel partners conference, how do you go into the event? Yeah, thank you, Darcy and Adam. Those are great points. To your reference, really having an understanding of who you want to meet with and really tune into kind of how they're interacting with you. My personal experience is many people are very focused on telling you what they can do for you and their best practices and how great they are with the chest pounding when in practicality, they should really be asking what you need versus what they have. So really focus in on people who are tuned into what you're looking to achieve, being prepared with a plan about what it is that's important to you so that we're able to actually engage meaningfully in a conversation about how we can help. One thing that I think is a big point also is really trying to understand how people are different and what their differentiators are. There's going to be a lot of similarities in messaging about security, about telecom, about whatever it is. You'll see a lot of me too conversations and really honing in on, hey, how are you different? And listening to how people can articulate that, it would be something that I would tune into as an attendee. And we'd love to share with you, you know, what we're seeing success in, where we're winning, and how we're a little bit different. So we look forward to seeing you in Vegas for sure. Those are such great points. Intention, differentiation, and planning. I think that's helpful for everybody. Now, if somebody can't attend this Channel Partner event, what are you excited about sharing in our partner portal? Yeah, so if someone's not able to make the event, something we're going to be talking to all our partners about, you know, of course, after we hear what they're working on, some we're excited to share. We have some partner forums that we've been doing once a quarter. We started off with the holiday version earlier in 2021. We did one in Q1, and we're going to be doing another one in Q2. They're a fantastic event that we're really going to be sharing with everyone we talk to at the show. Hey, hop into these forums, jump in, share your success stories. It's a real like community that we're building within the Quest Partner Program. Our partners can get on a forum, talk to each other, share successes, share challenges, and then we share a little bit more about Quest capabilities. Are we getting some fantastic feedback that our partners are walking away with increased insight about how they can serve their customers? And then, you know, Gary and I are going to be talking through new promotions, things we're incentivizing out there in the agent and partner community. And then I know Darcy's been working really hard on our partner portal and all the content and things that are going to be automated and at our partner's fingertips to the partner portal. So those are some of the things we're going to be sharing. And then if they can't make this show, um, we have a Channel Vision show coming up in Scottsdale, Arizona later in November this year. So that's going to be a fantastic get together where the partner community can all sit down again. So those are going to be kind of the, the big things we'll be sharing at the event if people aren't able to make it. I think Adam said it all. We just have a lot going on. It's very exciting, all the things that we're putting together and getting ready to roll out for our partners because there's so many ways that we can support them and help them grow their business beyond just helping you sell or helping you identify bigger opportunities. So it's just all very exciting. And if you can't make it to the show, please, you know, reach out to us. I, I've got uh, myself just for marketing calls. I have a couple agents who have reached out and said, Hey, I can't make it to the show. Can we set up an appointment? And the answer is absolutely. Yes. So we have those appointments booked too. So if you can't make it to the show, please let us know. And, and we're happy to set up some time and run through these programs that we're rolling out with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. For me, Paul, I think the, the key is Adam touched on it in the partner forum. It's a great opportunity to not only share information, but to be good listeners. Our partners have really ask us for things that can help them succeed in their business. And Darcy has been doing a great job of listening, documenting those items and actually executing them. The tools and the resources and the self-service items that we have coming out are a reflection and an output of input from our partner community. And we are incredibly excited to be able to provide not only scalable programs, but also custom programs. I think when working with Quest, obviously you want to have the easy button, but hey, how can I make myself a little bit special? What are some of the customization opportunities that we have to fit my business? And Darcy and the marketing team have done a great job understanding what those are deeply and then how we can help complement and grow the partner's business. So we're very excited, whether at the show or afterwards, to be able to uh, meet with folks to learn what the priorities are and a great opportunity. Yeah, the easy button is nice, but since that doesn't exist, Quest is the closest thing to the easy button. We're going to have to make Quest easy buttons. There's our giveaways. 
<laughs> yeah, it just looks like an easy button, but just with the Quest logo on it. Let's let's put in an order to the marketing department. Oh, wait. <laughs> what? Finally, very important question. If somebody is getting off that plane first night in the big city of Las Vegas, they don't know where to go. Do you have any recommendations for restaurants? Help the new person in Las Vegas, you guys. Have a great time. Where are they going? Gary, any suggestions? Paul, very important first question is who's paying? Yeah. <laughs> I was recently fortunate. I was recently fortunate enough to have a wonderful dinner at a uh, restaurant called Ariel. Oh, they I love have that. a uh, wine tower that goes from floor to ceiling. Very exciting. I, I would not recommend the chef's tasting menu. We did have uh, a, a, some of that for the table there and the portions were taste would be a little overstated. It was, it was kind of a micro portion. Uh, but the wine was very, very good. But uh, Oreal would be a, a recommendation of mine, yeah, depending on who's picking up the check and what you're looking for. Yeah, that's a great recommendation. I love that place. They do have the most amazing wine list. Why do they have like several thousand, don't they? You know, another place to go, I don't know if you guys have been there, to Red Square, the vodka bar restaurant. You know, it has an ice slab. The whole bar is a slab of ice and you can get flights of vodka from around the world. I accidentally did a $3,000 lunch there one day with someone who was paying the bill, not me. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good afternoon. It was a great afternoon, but that's a great place to go too. I think both of those restaurants are in Mandalay Bay or, you know, the hotel. They're connected. All to your point, there are many vendor sponsored parties and activities that are ongoing at the event and would encourage to the extent your bandwidth and appetite it can extend uh, it's, a, it's a great place to network you know off the show floor and actually get to meet people so certainly as you go there'll be people at the booth talking about their parties and whatnot afterwards my experience has been great food great beverage great networking opportunities is certainly some place that you can also consider if you're not sure where to go that's a great point looking past the show floor is an opportunity to network thank you for sharing that adam gary darcy I appreciate you guys jumping on and talking with me today. We're really looking forward to the show, Paul. Really, really looking forward to it. Darcy, Gary, Adam, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for having us. This is great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Paul. Thanks so much for listening. The Incident Report is brought to you by Quest Technology Management. Quest team will be attending Channel Partners Conference and Expo in Las Vegas on April 11th through the 14th. And we still have opportunities for you to grab a spot on our calendars. We are looking forward to discussing partner alignment opportunities, including joint business strategies and how Quest can help you grow your book of business. Schedule your appointment with the co-host of the Incident Report and VP of Partnerships, Adam Burke, Quest National Partner Manager, Gary Schick, or VP of Marketing, Darcy Baker. Links are in the episode description. With over 40 years of experience, Quest is a leading technology integrator working seamlessly with your staff and systems to achieve your IT goals. Learn more about everything they do at questsys.com. And if you have questions or suggestions for the podcast, you can always email Adam and myself at the incident report at questsys.com. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.